Good morning. I'd like to start with a quick show of hands. How many of you have used your mobile phone this morning? All right, keep your hands up if you also used your computer, your laptop, your desktop. All right, keep your hands up if you've also used your iPad. And if you've also used your iPad mini or other mini. OK, pretty amazing, though, to see that probably a quarter or a fifth of the audience still had their hands up and used three devices already. And it's only 9.30 in the morning. So the world is really changing. Your user, the person using your product, is no longer the person sitting at this desk. Let's take a quick look at what it actually does look like. With ubiquitous computing and mobile devices, we have constant access to information and products. And so in a day in the life, looks more like this. Wake up in the morning, you roll out of bed, you check your email on your phone, commute to work, maybe on the train, pull out your tablet and read some news, get some updates. Get to work, log on to your desktop or your laptop, maybe pull out your phone while you're on the way to the lunch line, and then later in the day, use your phone for a quick minute when you're on the supermarket line or on your way home. So we are constantly connected, constantly. And this new type of usage, this multi-screen usage, leads to new experiences, new interactions, and new touch points with your products. So how do we ensure that these experiences are really relevant, engaging, seamless, and rich experiences, no matter how, when, and where our users use our products? Strat is about making data work. And today, I want to talk specifically about making data work to delight your users. So the mobile space is very complex. And I want to leave you with three points today. First, that the mobile space is, in fact, complex, that it's rich, it's multidimensional, and that we need to recognize this, because it is different. The second point is that to simplify, we need to invest in tracking. And the third is that if we do, we do this investment, we can leverage the data to create amazing products that our users will love. So I simplified the picture for you. You might think, well, I'll track phone, tablet, desktop, and I'm good to go, right? Not exactly. Let's take a look at this phone user. This is not actually just a phone. It's specifically an Android phone. And it's not just an Android phone. It's actually a Samsung Galaxy S3, and that matters. There's a lot of variability within that Samsung experience, screen size, whether they're using app or web, whether, what connectivity they have, what price point, the location that they're in. Everything matters. Because if the goal is to optimize the user's experience, to make it engaging and delightful, then all of these will come into play. And if we don't take these into account, it impacts our understanding of what that experience is at that point in time. So let's take a, few, uh, a look at a few examples here. Screen size, why does that matter? Why do we want to track that? So we have phones, tablets, desktops, phablets, which are in between sizes. All of this really matters because it's more than just the screen size. It's actually a completely different form factor and completely different experience that the user engages with. Tablets are generally an infotainment device. Phones are useful for quick updates as they're on the go, fragmented throughout the day. It's very different and it impacts behavior. When you make a decision on what to present to the user on these different screen sizes, you need to know how that panned out for you. And if you want to iterate on that and change, you need to know what screen size they're using. Let's take a look at app version. So when you're about to launch your latest and greatest version on a website, you just push the code to production, right? And you're, you're good. All of your users are experiencing your latest and greatest. Mobile's different. That's not the case. The mobile apps are distributed through the App Store. So you submit to the App Store. You wait a few weeks. It gets approved. And then you have to wait a few days, a few weeks, maybe a few months, until all of your users manually grow and upgrade from the App Store. If you want to analyze the impact and understand how users are engaging with your new app, you need to know what app version they're on and not assume that they're all on the same one. What about app or web? When I'm using my mobile device to access your product, I can either do it on the app or I can do it through the browser on the mobile device. Why does that matter? It actually does. It's a very different experience. Generally, the mobile web is transactional, which means that people are driven in from an email that you have sent them. Whereas on the apps, they had a specific intent, a use case, and they wanted to go and launch your app, press on that icon, and use your app to get at some piece of information, some experience. It's usually more engaging and a richer experience, and that'll impact the session that they have and what you see as a result of that. A-B testing. You can A-B test your heart's delight on websites, and we all do that. On apps, it's limited. 
Let's look at operating systems. We've covered a few dimensions. Let's, let's look at a few more so I can convey to you how complex the space is and why it matters. We have a variety of apps on different operating systems, and that really impacts the behavior of the users. We see very different usage across the different operating systems. And if I take just a simple example that we saw from our own data, when we launch push notifications, we see a significant difference between iOS and Android at the operating system level. To opt into push notifications on iOS, you have to answer a specific question. Do you want to opt in or not? Yes or no? Very simple. On the Android, it's buried in a lot of other questions that are asked at the point of installation. And this small difference causes a 3x difference in the number of people that are opted into the push notifications. So operating system matters. What about location? People often think about location in the context of mobile as the precise location that that person is as they're navigating in a short distance. It's actually much more about context. Context matters. So the region of the world you're in, the smartphone penetration you're in, all of that matters when you think about mobile. For example, what if you designed around a user uh, base that's US-centric, and now I tell you that China has actually surpassed the number of smartphones that are actively used as compared to the US. How does that impact your product design? So hopefully I've conveyed to you that mobile is very complex and that it matters and that it impacts your data and your anal analytics and that you need to track it. And let's take a look at a few examples of how we can leverage that data and the richness and the heterogeneity in the data now that we're tracking it. When we set out to uh, design our iPad app at LinkedIn, we decided to use data to inform the product design and took a look at how desktops are used to access LinkedIn, basically between 8 to 5, and how tablets are used, coffee and couch. You see them spike in the morning, and you see them spike in the evening. You're not going to design in the same way knowing that. And now what happens when you looked at how that looks in India? In India, it turns out there is no coffee experience. You don't have a spike in the morning. Maybe people rush off to work and don't have coffee. And then they come in the evening, and they have a longer and later couch uh, experience. And so we designed our app around a rich content uh, consumption and news consumption experience. Again, very different, and very different from phone, which is actually a flat line throughout the course of the day. So all of this matters. Mobile is also a very dynamic space, and you have to follow the trends. So iPad mini launched, and Google launched the Nexus 7. These seven-inch screens are not just a small version of the iPad. They're very different. It would be wrong to think that you should design in the same way. You need to look at these new devices and think about how you're going to design for them. Simple example for this is that when we designed the iPad app, we looked at how people are using, and they use generally in landscape mode. And so you design around that. But what happens when these seven-inch screens come out and people are holding them in portrait mode? Should that impact your design? 40% of emails today are read on a mobile device. It's pretty amazing. By the end of the year, it's projected to surpass 50%, and that'll probably never go back. If you're not optimizing your email, you're losing a huge chunk of your member base. And so tracking this matters and acting upon it. Simple test we did, increase the font size, caused 2x increase in the click-through rates on our emails. It's pretty amazing. If you're tracking this data, you can make decisions and change your products based on it. The data tells us to simplify. So when we launched a new app, we took a very uh, large set of features that people could access and just boiled it down. It's a small screen. Let's give people four options. And users loved it. It led to dramatically increased engagement with our mobile apps. And so then what we did is say, OK, well, what learnings can we take and leverage across the different platforms? We learned from phone. We learned from tablet. What can we take? And we applied it to desktop. We launched a simplified version of the desktop experience, and again, led to significantly increased engagement, 70% more visits to the home page. Mobile is really about opportunity. By the end of 2013, there are going to be more mobile-connected devices than people on the planet. It's a pretty amazing opportunity. It's changing the way the world works. As more and more people start using mobile devices, and more segments of the population really make use of mobile data services, it's becoming an essential part of life. And mobility has proven truly transformational. Both in developing countries and in developed countries, it's becoming a common way of life, and it's really impacting everything we do. If you think about yourself, how you shop, how you connect with people, how you message friends, how you 
take care of your health care and your bills. Everything we do is becoming more and more mobile and becoming more and more mobile first. It's really transformational. And finally, it's about connecting. More and more people and more and more minutes are spent every day on mobile devices connecting. And it's really connecting you with your network, with your community. It's connecting the pieces of your day. It's connecting you with the tasks that you want to do at, during the course of your day. So let's make data work to delight users. Let's recognize the complexity in the mobile space and the fact that it is so large and multidimensional and constantly changing. Let's invest in tracking, create the tools to turn this rich, heterogeneous data source into an advantage that we can create amazing experiences through. And then let's leverage the data to create these delightful, seamless, multidimensional, multi-screen experiences for our users. Thank you. <laughs>